Well, today's meditation is going to be a little bit different. Uh, we're going to go to the other side of the island from the beach, the opposite side, over to the intercoastal waterway. This thing rides a little bumpy. Well, I don't know how much you'll be able to hear because uh, we're down beside the bridge on the opposite side of the island from the beach. And so there's all sorts of vehicles going by because this island's about 15 miles long and there's only two bridges. And this is the side that has most of the shops. So we do get a lot of uh, bridge traffic here. But um, I'm down here because this is the edge of the intercoastal waterway. And uh, there are a lot of shore birds and I'm hoping uh, to uh, use my big camera here to uh, get some pictures of some shorebirds uh, that uh, like to fish in the salt marsh. And there might be some, some humans down there fishing in the salt marsh too, because it's a pretty good spot. But don't tell anybody I told you. So anyway, let's go for a little bit of a walk. And uh, while we're doing that, I will share some thoughts about our passage for next Sunday. The Gospel of Matthew, chapter 20, verses 1 through 16. For the kingdom of heaven is like a landowner who went out early in the morning to hire laborers for his vineyard. After agreeing with the laborers for the usual daily wage, he sent them into his vineyard. When he went out about nine o'clock, he saw others standing idle in the marketplace, and he said to them, You also go into the vineyard, and I will pay you whatever is right. So they went. Now notice, in the first, the first group, he spe specified that he was going to pay them a denarius, a usual uh, daily wage. And then the second group, it's just like, I'll pay you whatever's right. And they're, and they're like, okay, because they, at that point, are not choosers. They're beggars. They will have to take whatever they can get. And then in verse 5, when he went out again about noon and about 3 o'clock, he did the same. And about five o'clock he went out and found others standing around and he said to them, why are you standing here idle all day? They said to him, because no one has hired us. He said to them, you also go into the vineyard. When evening came, the owner of the vineyard said to his manager, call the laborers and give them their pay, beginning with the last and then going to the first. So that's interesting in itself, right? Because he's now the guys that started uh, before nine o'clock work through the long day and the heat of the afternoon. Now they have to wait in line behind the people that started later. And he said, uh, and, and then in verse nine, it says, when those hired about five o'clock came, each of them received the usual daily wage, a denarius. Now, when the first came, they thought they would receive more, but each of them also received the usual daily wage. And when they received it, they grumbled against the landowner, saying, These last worked only one hour, and you have made them equal to us who have borne the burden of the day and the scorching heat. But he replied to one of them, Friend, I am doing you no wrong. Did you not agree with me for the usual daily wage? Take what belongs to you and go. I choose to give to this last the same as I give to you. Am I not allowed to do what I choose with what belongs to me? Or are you envious, because I am generous? So the last will be first, and the first will be last. Ooh. May God bless the hearing of that word, because uh, we're going to need his blessing to figure out why Jesus shared such an offensive parable. I mean, that's, that's pretty wild, right? got people working all day in the heat of the day for denarius which is the a typical day laborers wage in those days so that happened and now <laughs> he comes up later and hires these other people later in the day some of them not even working in the heat of the afternoon and he pays them a denarius for a few hours of work and I kind of have the same question that the first guys had. Uh, 
like, how is that fair? And Jesus doesn't say it's fair. He just puts himself in the role of the landowner and says, look, it's my money. I can do whatever I want. So yeah, that's a, that's a little bit offensive. So I want to I wanna pick out a couple of things here. First of all, let's ask the question, who were the people that got hired at the end of the day? And who were the people that got hired at the beginning of the day? Because I'm thinking the guys that got hired at the beginning of the day, they were young, they had strong backs, they had muscles. But the guys that got hired at the end of the day, they probably were maybe not as healthy, not as uh, big, not as strong. Um, maybe they had bad reputations in the community. Maybe they had earned bad reputations in the community. And so nobody wanted to hire them to work in their fields. So uh, the landowner goes out and he hires these these undesirables. And what it made me think of was back in Matthew 18, I think it's verse 14. If that's wrong, I'll, I'll put the right thing on the screen. I edit this video, uh, 1814, where Jesus uh, leaves the 99 sheep and goes after one of his little ones who has gone astray. And, uh, or as the, I think the King James Version puts it, something like the least of these. The idea being, <coughs> again, like the last laborers, even though the 99 were the may have been more well regarded, he left them to go and retrieve the least of these. And then uh, Jesus goes and he, and, and the landowner in the parable goes and he hires the undesirables to come and work at the end of the day and get as much as the strong and the desirable people did from the beginning of the day. And that's pretty scandalous, it's pretty offensive. But then, isn't the gospel? Now, you know, you had the Pharisees that were super righteous, highly regarded in the community. They couldn't stand Jesus because he was out there hanging out with the uh, the uh, whores and the uh, tax collectors, and you know, he would be out there with the homeless people today, and um, with anyone who is disenfranchised, uh, I, and that would be offensive to the Pharisees who want to be the ones that get all the respect and all of the attention. And it was offensive. And Jesus, when challenged on that, said, look, it's, it's not the well that need a physician, it's the sick. And so, you know, the catch, the catch in the gospel is, in order to accept grace, you have to visualize yourself not as the young, strong guy at the beginning of the day, but as the weak, old, helpless guy at the end of the day who could probably barely do the work that lasted for an hour or two. And that's that's what grace is about. And so the more worthy you think you are of being part of God's family, then the more scandalous this parable becomes, doesn't it? And so, on the other hand, if you're in one of those situations where you do not feel valued by the community, maybe even threatened by the community, you know, over and over again recently, we've been hearing testimonies of people of color who are afraid when they get pulled over, um, maybe just because a, a tail light is out, they feel like they're so disregarded and unimportant in the community that this poses a physical dangerous risk to them. So depending on how you see yourself reflects on how you see this parable. If you see yourself as someone who does not have the right to be treated better than everybody else, if you see yourself on the contrary as somebody who needs God's grace, someone that is only going to be in fellowship with God if God is gracious and generous with him or her. Uh, that person, the disenfranchised, 
the the least of these, the little ones, uh, the late in the day hired laborers, we're the ones who look at this scandalous, offensive parable and say, thank God, uh, he wants me to. And so uh, it's almost like a little Rorschach test of a parable. When you read that parable, how offended are you? And what does that say about your attitude toward the grace of God? Do you think you deserve it more than someone else? If you do, then I bet you're very, you're very scandalized by this. But if you think that God is being very generous in uh, giving you his reward, his grace, then I bet you find this parable to be very encouraging. So I hope that that's helpful to you as you look at this uh, and prepare your hearts for Sunday's sermon. Thank you for sharing your time with me. Until next time, may God bless you.